All right, let's take a look at doing a two by two repeated measures ANOVA in JASP. So as always for JASP, we're going to want a CSV file. Here's our data right here, CSV file with uh, some Stroop data that we collected in class. And the CSV file, of course, is sort of the common currency of data analysis. It's a kind of data file, data structure that just about anything can read. If you take a look at the actual data in a CSV file, it's nothing but uh, a text file with commas separating the columns. So that is nice and easy, and it is what JASP requires. So the data, data that we're using are uh, from a basic Stroop task that we ran in class, and we're going to want to run a repeated measures ANOVA. First thing we're going to need to do is to name our factors and our levels. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that here. And so I'll call the first one task and level two, I will call interference. Level one for task, that could be reading. Level two, naming. And interference can be just uh, positive or let's say plus or minus for yes or no interference. Okay, so if we uh, had a more complex design, of course, we could add more levels here, we could add more factors, but in this case, we just have a simple two by two design. So this is all we need. At this point, all we need to do is to uh, plug our data in. So we start down here and we see that the first one we need is reading with interference. So if we look at our list over here, that's going to be here, reading with interference. Click the arrow and moves it over. Next slot, reading with no interference. That's going to be this one. Naming with interference. And naming with no interference. Couldn't be easier than that. And that is really all we need to do to calculate repeated measures ANOVA in JASP. All the rest is just icing on the cake. So we take a little peek over here and look at our results. And we get a nice little uh, N over table here. It tells us the sums of squares, degrees of freedom, mean square, uh, F value, and a P value. Very uh, nice to see those P values there. That's always pleasant to see something like that. And just like in the t-test, JASP gives us lots of options for other things we might to do, want to do. We might want to do some post-hoc tests, uh, or we might want to do some descriptive plots. We can take a look at those here. So, um, I don't know, you can take your pick what you want to put on a horizontal uh, axis and what you want to put as a separate line. Uh, I think in this case, I'm going to put the interference as the horizontal axis and then task uh, as a separate line. Uh, and let's put some arrow bars in there as well. And I'll choose the 95% uh, confidence interval. Scroll down and there's our plot. So if what you're looking for is a quick repeated measures ANOVA, it's tough to find an easier way to do it than with JASP. Thank you again, JASP. Always a pleasure doing business with you.